So now, Stefan Halong, could you please speak to this topic and give your perspective? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, those are my disclosures. Okay, so the, the question here, the debate, should we treat those uh, large thoracal abdominal aneurysm with a multilayer stent or uh, with a branched endograft? Question mark. So what's the rationale for using a branched endograft? Well, you're going from proximal uh, healthy aorta to distal healthy aorta, proximal to the aneurysm, distal to the aneurysm, uh, implanting a non-porous uh, endograft, and any uh, visceral vessel in this area will be perfused by a, a branch of the endograft. And we usually uh, use um, those pre uh, reconstruction to depict the proximal and distal uh, landing zone and to size our endograft. And we've seen this morning that there, we have off-the-shelf options now and we still have uh, access to the CMD custom-made devices. Now, what's the rationale for uh, using the multi-layer stand? And I have to say, I, I still really don't, don't understand, but we've seen that uh, in the presence of the multi-layer stand, the speed of the shearing vortex is reduced but do we really want to reduce um, the flow when, or the shear stress when we're treating large thoracic abdominal aneurysm, or do you want to exclude uh, those aneurysm? So here you can see a patient treated with a multilayer stand. This is the post-op CT, uh, quite a large thoracic abdominal uh, aneurysm here. It's quite a, a frightening image, but um, it's normal to find such an image because we're actually implanting a porous endograft. And we already have experience with porous endograft. And remember the experience with the first generation uh, Gore device. And remember that uh, uh, in this paper uh, published in 2004, we had the probability of freedom from site growth or expansion at four years was only 43%. And in the same paper, we could uh, see those images of an excluded aneurysm. There's no endoleak, there's no contrast in the sac, but you can see that this excluded aneurysm was actually uh, growing, and uh, so there's a real concern about uh, did we change the natural history of uh, uh, this aneurysm? I I'm not sure, and the, the rupture risk is still here. So we need time, and I understand, to uh, achieve exclusion with this uh, multilayer stent. And this, uh, these are the images that we can see. Uh, you, you have the multilayer stent here, and you have flow in the sac, perfusing uh, the SMA, the, right renal, the left renal, and the, and the right renal here. But when you look closely at those images, they're really similar to usual uh, aneurysms. You have thrombus in the sac, and you have flow going to the SMA here, or going to the right renal here. So what have we changed? I'm not sure. Uh, this is an example of a multilayer stent uh, implanted in a uh, thoracic aneurysm. You see a, a nice uh, procedure, um, very easy and, and quick. And on the six-month follow-up, you have a, a occlusion of uh, the aneurysm sac, but you have an aneurysm diameter that uh, increased from uh, 56 to 71 millimeter. Another example with a thoracoabdominal aneurysm. And now, also a very nice and fast procedure and those are uh, the usual nice uh, 3D VR reconstruction that we get with uh, patent uh, visceral arteries. But when you look more closely at, at this case, there's thrombus in the stent and there's thrombus in the SMA, and that uh, really raises concern. And this patient also had an increase uh, four months after the procedure from uh, 67 to, to 81. Now, uh, branch patency, well, obviously, yeah, um, um, you can see here intercostal staying patent, and obviously all uh, uh, visceral or uh, branch from the aorta uh, remain patent uh, because uh, the aneurysm uh, is still uh, perfused. And look at this post-op uh, image. You can see that there's a, a patent cedic trunk, a patent SMA. This patient was treated in uh, July uh, 2010, and one month later the patient came back uh, with an occluded uh, cedic trunk here and an occluded SMA here. So with the multilayer stent, is it an easy procedure? Or probably a very easy procedure. Uh, do we change natural history of the aneurysm? I'm not really sure, and we have really no data to support this. Branch patency, well, most of the time the branch will remain patent, but not always. And we have data to support the multilayer stent. Well, uh, did this um, PubMed search and really only found papers on uh, visceral aneurysm, and a lot of papers with, with, with good results on the visceral aneurysm, and only one case report on the thoracoabdominal aneurysm. 
uh, what about branch end the graph? Well, there's a lot of literature from Tim Schroeder, from uh, Eric Verhoeven, uh, from myself, or uh, this uh, major paper from Roy Greenberg on over 400 patients, and I'll present the, the outcomes, the midterm and long-term outcomes this afternoon. So in conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's probably a good option for visceral aneurysms. There's really no data to support that you can use those in thoracoabdominal aneurysms. It's probably too good to be true. And I really think that those large shock abdominal aneurysms should be referred to high volume centers uh, performing both open and endovascular repair. Thank you for your attention.